my life was completely screwed, to put it nicely. Uh, now it's no longer screwed at all. This is the story of how I unscrewed myself. <laughs> my story certainly is nowhere near as big as this one. Um, this is the smallest photo of a book with the words my life story written on it I could find on the internet. So I want to set the expectation right and say that I apologize. This only goes for five minutes, but try to bear with me. Um, main characters in this story is uh, my, ah, uh, yeah, um, my hilarious father, Phil, who taught me how to love life and to laugh, and uh, my wonderful mum, Jane, who has an unconditional love for us kids and an unconditional hatred for being photographed. Um, my eldest brother, Ben, older than me by four years, who is a protector of justice, a leader, and a champion of sailing, and middle child, Christopher, older than me by two years, cheeky, confident, champion rugby player. And then there was me. Um, <laughs> guess I was like the theatrical one, I suppose. Um, I didn't really like sport, um, unless you count dancing as sport, uh, which no one really seemed to do. Uh, <laughs> um, all three of us boys would later grow up to suffer different kinds of mental illnesses. We also suffered from different kinds of mullets. Uh, <laughs> Which is no one's fault, that's just how it happened in those days, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I want to present to you tonight the idea of talking, just talking, and how that can be a really powerful thing when we apply it in different ways, and how I think it's something that we often undervalue and don't quite necessarily get right all the time. Uh, I went to a pretty blokey, sporty high school. Um, I didn't really talk about my mental health issues very much. I was quite an eccentric kid and people really embraced that, that was great, but it would not be okay to talk about being mentally ill or being suicidal as I was. Um, my brother also hid his mental health issues, probably more than I did. He was very popular and very athletic and he wouldn't let many people see the crippling anxiety and depression that he kept to himself for the most part. I always really look up to Christopher, I wanted to be exactly like him. Um, people thought I had it a lot worse than he did because I was more vocal about it. I was in and out of psych wards, I was on pretty heavy medication, I uh, had shock therapy when I was 16 and I spoke really candidly about being suicidal for many, many years. In reality though, Christopher had it just as bad as I did, maybe even worse in some ways. The difference was that he didn't feel comfortable talking about it so much because he wanted to maintain his social standing, I believe, and his strong exterior. He didn't want to let people in too much and show his real side of himself. He, um, he killed himself when I just turned 16, just before he was 18, and um, no one saw that coming. Uh, we knew he was not well, he was getting treatment for it, but um, no one could know what he was really feeling on the inside, and that still hurts a lot today, but I think it's really important to discuss. Talking about real life doesn't make you a pussy, in my opinion. <laughs> I was, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I was made to believe it did for a long time and so I, I didn't talk about it and I wish that wasn't the case. I believe it's actually the opposite. I think talking about real life makes you pretty strong. <laughs> I'm no hero by any means, but I found in my journeys that the more you talk about real stuff, people begin to notice that and they respect it. They respect your efforts in trying and I think that can be quite contagious. A really great outcome of speaking about real stuff is that it can help you and it can bring your loved ones closer. Um, but an ideal outcome is that it can influence or um, encourage other people to speak up too if they're scared. Not just about mental health, but about anything really. I think that's a pretty powerful thing. It took a long time, but our family's really good now. Um, my brother Ben is really successful in his career and has a young family. My dad continues to work hard and be a hilarious inspiration. And I'm totally mentally better now, and I spend a lot of my time speaking to people about mental health which I really enjoy. And my mum uh, wrote a memoir about our whole family experience and here she is winning a human rights award for it. Um, woo! You know, <laughs> you know what poignant words my mum said when her name was unexpectedly announced as the winner that night? Shit. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that talking would have necessarily saved my brother's life, but it certainly would have helped a lot, I believe. I know talking has helped me greatly in feeling less alone, and I think it's really up to all of us to create that environment for ourselves and each other. 
So let's abandon this idea of, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? And instead reconnect real feelings and thoughts with real words because hollow words dilute our human experience and prevent us from really communicating and connecting. So let's talk about real shit. Thank you. Yeah.